Hey there, it's Brian. Um, today I just want to do a quick video about developers. Which developers do I use and why? So when you're starting out in um, developing your own film, it is natural to want to experiment with all sorts of different stuff and that's totally fine. But your goal should be to eventually settle on a handful of film developer combinations which you really like and which really work for you. Uh, you know, three, four, maybe five film developer combinations that, that work best for you should, should probably be your goal. Um, I personally have settled on three developers that I like, that I use, um, and, um, and a handful of films as well. And I'll just go over those briefly. Um, as a general matter, I prefer powder developers. Uh, powder chemicals have the advantage of, while not certainly not infinite shelf life, I'm sure, uh, but it is, however, probably safe to say that powder chemicals will not oxidize on the shelf before you use them uh, in, in your lifetime. That's, <laughs> that's, probably a safe, uh, that's probably safe to say. Um, so I prefer the powder developers and powder chemicals where I can use them. Um, and Ilford makes three powder developers, uh, and I use two of those three. So Ilford's powder developers are ID11, Microfin, and Perceptol. Here's Microfin, here's Perceptol. Um, ID11 is the third one, which I don't use. ID11 is Ilford's uh, version of Kodak D76, which was the photojournalist's go-to developer in the 1970s, at least in the, in the United States. Uh, very popular, very common. When I was a kid, everybody learned how to develop film uh, shooting Tri-X and developing it in D76. That was just the standard developer of the day. Uh, it's less popular today because it's less, you know, it's, it's sort of dull, plain, humdrum, you know, uh, no, nothing, nothing special about it. <laughs> Except that it works with darn near every film you can think of. You know, other than that, there's not much special about it. Um, I don't, uh, personally, I don't use it because I like Perceptol and Microfin, um, and I'll tell you why. Perceptol is specifically designed for pulling, Microfin designed for pushing. Uh, either one you can, you can use for box speed, although Ilford's instructions tend to favor Microfin for box speed um, and Perceptol for pulling. Um, so, which do I use and how? Well, generally I just follow Ilford's instructions. Uh, their instructions are, uh, are accurate, their times are good. I generally do not need to uh, modify Ilford's recommended development times. And you can find the recommended development times for, your, uh, for the films you prefer. Uh, in two places. Number one, you can find them in the film uh, cartridges, in the film boxes themselves. Okay, so on the back of 3200, you've got instructions for developer, developing in Ilfatec, Microfin, ID11, D76, Ilfatec, Ilfasol, Perceptol, Rodinol, Microdol, Tmax, uh, and so forth and so on. Okay, so this is the first place you might look. Uh, likewise, FP4, same deal. Um, instructions for Microfin, ID11, D76, Ilfatec, HC110, Ilfasol, Perceptol, uh, Rodinol, Tmax, Extol, uh, all, your all your popular developers, whether Ilford or, um, or from other brands. Um, so that's sort of the shorthand developing instructions you can get from Ilford's own, just, just from opening up the box and, and reading the instructions on, on, the, uh, on the inside of the box. Uh, the second place you can get good developing instructions is from Ilford's website. And what I use, there's two, two handouts that I've printed for myself, which I use on a regular basis. Uh, one is, and I'll link to these below. I will put links down in the description, down in the description to where you can uh, download these things. So this is Ilford's data sheet for their powder developers. Uh, Perceptol, ID11, and Microfin. And if you flip over, this is all technical data, technical data, blah, 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 how to mix it. That's, it could not be easier. Uh, technical data and haha ha, here we go so here's the section on Ilford films and it's showing you exactly you know how to develop various Ilford films uh, you've got Perceptol, ID11, Microfin plus the various dilutions stock 1 to 1, 1 to 3 going across the board for each developer uh, and recommended times for every film developer combination if you see the little dash there it simply means that that particular combination is not recommended uh, which, something which I find very helpful. Uh, down in, the, in this section here, uh, I've just scribbled my own handwritten notes. Uh, for example, for Pan F and Rodinol, because ro I like Rodinol too, and that's um, uh, you know that that's not on, appear on the on the on the data sheet. 
So I simply scribble my own notes, and, and this is what I use. This is what I go to when I'm developing film, and I always double check it. Uh, next page are some non-Ilford films. So Ilford will give developing times for uh, TMAX, uh, Kodak Plus X, which we all miss, those of us who used it. Long um, Plus X is, is dead, long live Plus X. Tri-X, APX 100, I don't, I don't think that's around. Um, Fuji 108, wow, this is an old data sheet. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm, uh, I, wonder what the, I wonder if they've updated this. Oh well, anyway, I'll put a link to it, you can download it, and, and perhaps they have. Uh, and again, here I just um, scribbled some of my own notes, mostly for Fomapan films, which I also like to use. So that's a very useful data sheet. Another one is this, and this is perhaps one of the most useful data sheets in all of film photography. And that is the time temperature compensation chart. You do not have to obsess over getting your temperature on the nose correct with black and white chemistry. Color chemistry, yes. Black and white, no. For black and white chemistry, download this data sheet. You can compensate because developing times for black and white chemicals are always given for 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit here in the shaded column there. This gives time conversions for uh, 18 degrees Celsius up to 27 degrees Celsius. So as long as your tap water is somewhere between 18 and 27 degrees, you can compensate. Uh, so you, one need not obsess over um, getting your temperature just, just right. Um, as long as it's within this range. Very, very useful data sheet. I will link to this below, download it, make use of it. Um, a word about one non-powder developer I really like is Rodinol. Um, this is, here's a, here's a, a bottle of the original Rodinol made by Agfa, um, which is no longer in business. It was then the same formula. This is one of the oldest developer formulas in the world. Uh, the same formula was then made as RO9, uh, and it is now made by uh, some other companies. I, I know FOMA makes a version of it. Um, basically, go to the Massive Development Chart. If you haven't heard of the Massive Development Chart, you need to. Uh, I'll link to that below as well. So go to the Massive Development Chart and, and, and look for Rodinol, and they'll, they'll have a technical note there, which um, usually tells you what the, um, the various versions of Rodinol being made today are. Uh, because the original ad for Rodinol is out of production, has been for a number of years, uh, but the, 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 the chemical, the, the developer, uh, once known as Rodinol, uh, is still in production in various forms. Uh, so that's useful to know. Finally, a word on fixer. So as I mentioned, I like, <clears throat> excuse me, I like powder developers because of the shelf life. I also like powder fixers. So in powder fixers, you basically have two choices. Um, there's FOMA and Kodak. One is just as good as the other. There's nothing wrong with either one. They're, they're, uh, they work just, just as well. The advantage of the FOMA fixer is this is a small package which makes one liter. Uh, this is the smallest package of Kodak fixer you can buy, and it makes a gallon, or a U.S. gallon, or 3.8 liters. Um, and I don't shoot enough to use a gallon of fixer before it oxidizes, so this for me would be wasteful, which is why I prefer the... FOMA fix. Um, because one liter of fixer, yeah, I can, I can use one liter of fixer before it goes bad. A gallon, that's a bit of a stretch, at least for me. I mean, maybe if, if you shoot enough volume, um, it may be worthwhile for you to, to mix up a gallon of fixer. For me, it's not. Um, so I use the, um, I use FOMA. Um, okay, we covered, oh, stop bath, a word about stop bath. Very quickly, stop bath is the least uh, important, the least critical chemical in your black and white developing process. There is no powder stop bath that I'm aware of, but so what big deal. A lot of people say you don't need stop bath at all, that it's superfluous, that it's unnecessary. I use stop bath because that's how I was trained when I was a kid. Uh, so that's just what I got used to. So I, I do use stop bath and the, the shelf life of the liquid stop bath tends to be pretty, pretty long. Um, the, um, uh, but a lot of people just use water as a stop bath. Uh, that's a different topic for a different day, and it's beyond the scope of this video. But before you obsess over stop bath, do a little homework and and um, um, listen to both sides of that argument. You know, it's you know, I don't know who's right. I mean, I use stop bath, but you know, it's entirely possible that you know, it's not necessary. 
Uh, plenty of people don't. Um, so that is my two cents worth on developing chemicals for black and white for, for today. Um, in the future, I'll try to do some more uh, videos about the developing process uh, as opposed to just, you know, um, uh, camera gear reviews because um, I think a lot of people are put off and intimidated by the developing process and I would like to be as helpful as possible. So uh, if you have questions, drop me a note, ask, and I'll see if I can, uh, uh, if I can answer it. I'll do a video. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.